On the other side, Zhongs went to the Southern District Police Station to find out the reason for the chief's resignation. He heard from colleagues. The chief had a niece in junior high school named Z, who was very dear to him. Z was bullied at school for a long time and eventually couldn't stand it and jumped off the rooftop. She was saved, but is essentially in a vegetative state. The perpetrator's parents wanted to settle with money. The station chief made a huge fuss about it. Afterward, to take care of Z, helplessly resigned from the police station. The treatment cost is a very large expense. Colleagues wanted to raise money to help, but they were refused by the station chief. It's said that a benefactor assisted by helping him gather the funds. Z once checked in the hospital. The person who helped pay the hospital bill was Huang Jim. After Z jumped off the building in search of death, the director came to reason with the assailant's father, and present at the time was the accountant. Wang Jim, he saw the helpless look on the director's face and was reminded of his own mother. He too was a victim of campus violence. Understanding the director's feelings, so Wang Jim went to him and provided evidence of the assailant's father's embezzlement. These are enough to put the other party in jail, and Wang Jim's demands are not high, just hoping the chief can help him take revenge. For the sake of Chief Z, there's no other choice. Afterwards, to ensure the plan goes smoothly, the chief specifically caught a criminal for Huang Jim to practice courage, so that he can be ruthless when taking revenge. At the same time, Wai has already regained consciousness, but doesn't seem to be in a good state. After calming Wai's emotions, Zhongs interrogated him, wanted to know what exactly happened that day. Wai said the squad leader committed suicide with a gun, also said everything was because of Anze. Hearing this, Zhongs became somewhat emotional, immediately took two pills to calm his nerves. After calming down, Zhongs asked why whose Rubik's Cube was at the scene. Why did not answer? Instead, he has been praying for forgiveness from the heavens. Looking at his state, Zhongs couldn't get anything out of him, so he called an ambulance to take him away. After the interrogation, Zhongs returned to his office, only to discover that the storage card was missing. Zhongs thought it might have been left in the car. Just as he was about to go check, he found the storage card on Jiang Interpol's desk. This indicates that she had already seen the contents. After much hesitation, Zhongs still confesses to Jiang Interpol what happened that night. Jiang Interpol doesn't pursue the matter, planning to give him another chance. So Jiang Interpol asks Zhongs, apart from Huang Jim, if he has other close friends. Zhongs still answers no. Jiang Interpol feels somewhat disappointed upon hearing this. The team members discovered while investigating Case Z. A journalist named Jean Jongbin once did an in-depth report on the incident of Z's jumping off a building, even won an award for it. It was only after Zhongs looked up the information that he realized he was the boss back then. The incident of the class leader being severely beaten by Anze was a hot topic in the school. The boss lost face and was upset, took it out on the class leader and beat him up. Zhongs and Huang Jim happened to witness the scene. Zhongs then remembered, Rubik's cubes were often played with by the boss. He is Huang Jim's next target. After making progress, Zhongs immediately took action with his team and notified the local police to protect him. Meanwhile, Jiang Interpol found An's mother to learn about some of An's past. An Zhe came from a poor family. His father left home and has not returned for eight years. Mother is busy entertaining guests and is not at home all day. Just to make money to support An's education, An Zhe is usually aloof in nature, basically has no friends. But An's mother remembers. At that time An Zhe was suspended from school for beating up a classmate. Zhongs and Huang Jim even came to see him. The two could be considered An's only friends. Having said all this, Da took out In's relics from the room. Inside was the only photo of Anze. There was also his suicide note, which read, Mom, I'm sorry, I can't take it anymore. Jiang Interpol, in order to investigate, borrowed these two things from the old lady and promised to return them to her. The boss did not feel surprised by Zong's arrival, because a year ago, Wang Jim had already told him, Zongs will come looking for him. After Z had an accident, the boss took the initiative to contact the prison head, wanting to do an exclusive interview for Z's situation. Wang Jim feels it's like a cat crying over a dead mouse, sensing bad intentions, so he posed as Z's relative to participate in the interview, to take the opportunity to probe him. Hearing about Z's ordeal, the boss was very distressed and promised to reveal the truth. To speak out for victims of campus violence, Huang Jim couldn't sit still any longer and said that he was lying. He completely cannot understand the victim's feelings. The boss did not contradict. He indeed has no right to say such words because he was once a perpetrator of school violence indirectly leading to a student losing their life. He still remembers that person's name to this day, never daring to forget easily if time could be reversed. He would rather exchange his own life for ants. After hearing Huang Jim reveal his identity, if it weren't for the words just now, he might already be dead by his own hand. Upon recognizing Huang Jim, 
the boss, immediately knelt before him, apologizing for the mistakes made in the past. He didn't dare hope for Huang Jim's forgiveness. He only wished for a chance to atone for his sins. After listening, Huang Jim took out a small notebook. It detailed the process of school bullying. He requested the boss to write these events into a report and make it public after one year. As for the death of Anze, Zones will provide an answer, but when the boss asked about it, Zones just wouldn't say anything. Right after Zones left the newspaper office, Wang Jim called him, asking why he dared not reveal everything. The true cause of Anne's death, clearly, only he knows. Upon hearing this, Zones became uncontrollable, racing wildly on the street. Hallucinations even occurred. The day Inze had an accident, all teachers and students gathered in the playground for a meeting, but Inze came to the rooftop alone, jumped down from the highest point. Everyone present witnessed the scene. As the memory deepened, Zones' emotions became increasingly unstable. Even with medication, hallucinations would still occur. In desperation, he burned the joint photo. Only then did Inze disappear from his sight. After Jiang Interpol returned to the police station, he studied Anne's left belongings. At this moment, Anne's mother called. She mentioned an important clue. The suicide note wasn't written by Inze. The handwriting on it didn't match Anne's. Hearing this, Jiang Interpol was greatly shocked. She flipped over the back of the photo. The discovery that the handwriting behind resembles that on the suicide note led to a professional appraisal. The result was consistent. That is to say, the suicide note was forged. The person who sent the photo to Inze and the one who left the suicide note is the same. So besides Inze, the other three people in the photo are all suspects. They are Huang Jim, Zones, and the guy with glasses. Although the handwriting is from when they were children, but it can also be compared with the handwriting in adulthood. However, it requires simultaneous authentication of the handwriting of three people. So Jiang Interpol returned to the office, searching for the handwriting left by Zones. Unexpectedly, he was caught on the spot by the other party. By this time, Huang Jim had already set his sights on the next target, the bespectacled guy who had met with Jiang Interpol. The man appears to be gentle on the surface. In reality, he is a social degenerate. He owns a crime website named after DP. Men are among its members. That day DP posted a mission on the dark web, requesting to eliminate an old uncle who wouldn't die. Not long after the mission was posted, many people commented below. The man with glasses was luckily chosen by DP to carry out this task, and all of this was seen by Huang Jim. In fact, not long ago, Huang Jim had someone investigate the man with glasses. University majored in electrical engineering, joined FD company not long after graduation, then resigned for some unknown reason, currently has no fixed job and enjoys playing with stocks. The chief met a hacker when he was a detective and asked him to hack into the bespectacled man's computer. Upon investigation, they indeed made a discovery. The bespectacled man is a member of the DP criminal website, has done quite a few bad things. After hearing this, Huang Jim was not surprised at all. After all, he was extremely hypocritical in his youth, often secretly selling discs to schoolmates. That day, he happened to be caught by the two class monitors. The class monitors threatened the boy with glasses, making him behave like an obedient dog, acting according to their instructions, to avoid being expelled from school. The boy with glasses had no choice but to agree obediently. That day, the class monitors deliberately tripped Huang Jim, wanting to teach him a lesson. After all, the fact that he teamed up with Anze to rebel against himself. The class monitor remembers it clearly. Huang Jim isn't cowardly either. He stands up and takes on the class monitor directly. At this moment, a slap comes flying. The one who struck is a man with glasses. He warns Huang Jim not to be disrespectful towards the class monitor. Immediately after, he takes out a homemade electric device and hits Huang Jim with it. The principle is similar to a stun baton, just with a lower voltage, and it won't leave any marks on the body. Upon seeing Huang Jim being bullied, Zhongs immediately steps in to intervene. The result was being kicked to the ground by Anpa. Both of them were subdued without any chance to resist, and Zay was suspended from school again. No one could help them. Everything that the bespectacled man did at that time, Huang Jim kept it all in his heart. Even if it meant flaying him thousands of times, it wouldn't be too much. After taking a syringe, Huang Jim got off the car and headed to the bespectacled man's house, but encountered police patrolling on the way. He lowered his cap brim and quickly passed by, didn't expect to still be stopped by the police. The police had no other intention, just kindly reminding him that his car lights were not turned off. Once it was said, Huang Jim couldn't just walk away, so he went back to turn off the car lights. As a result, 
accidentally dropped an injection, the police hadn't seen what it was. When Huangjim picked it up, the police felt something was wrong and asked Huangjim to cooperate with the inspection. The syringe was still found on Huangjim and was doomed once identified. So Huangjim started the car, preparing to leave. The police saw it and immediately tried to stop him. Huangjim ignored them. Stepping on the gas to escape the scene, the police wanted to give chase but accidentally met with an accident. Elsewhere, Xiang Interpol was rummaging through Zones's workstation, wanting to take his handwriting for comparison, to see if he was the one who wrote that suicide note. But midway through the search, Zones suddenly walked in, scolding her for rummaging through other people's belongings. Xiang Interpol did not explain. Instead, he pulled out the photo Huangjim gave to Zones. She had already investigated clearly. Zones' friends from middle school, besides Huangjim, there was also an A. So the second year class 5 was not 34 students but 35. Yet Zones deliberately excluded an A. Could it be just because he is already deceased? Zones did not defend himself. The people who have passed away need not be included in the search list. Because Huangjim will not go to kill a dead person. After finishing, Zongs tears up the photo, tells Jiang Interpol to stop doing futile things. Finding out Huangjim's next target is the utmost priority, but Jiang Interpol refuses to listen to him. Anne's death is full of doubts, as if this suicide note was forged by someone, and everything that Huangjim is doing now, maybe it's related to Anne's death. Therefore, she must unravel this riddle. A report comes in midway through the conversation. Traces of Huangjim have been found in Taixin Cave. Zongs invites Jiang Interpol to go together. Jiang Interpol hastily refuses. From this moment on, the pursuit of Huangjim is Zong's responsibility. She aims to uncover the truth behind the case of that year. Zong's does not agree. He is the head of the special case group. Without his permission, Xiang Interpol cannot act on her own accord, since she is unwilling to go after Huangjim. Stay in the group to do logistical work. Xiang Interpol is not that easy to compromise. As soon as Zones left, she sent the handwriting to the appraiser. After Huangjim's movements were exposed, he switched cars and continued his operation. He runs a transportation company, has nothing but many cars. Before long, Zones arrived at the place where Huangjim appeared, asked the patrol officers about the situation at that time. The man with glasses originally wanted to go out on a mission, seeing police outside, had to give up for now. Huangjim will loiter in this area, indicates the next target lives nearby. Zones asks the patrol officers to gather the local residents' information, he is determined to find the person, but the patrol officers are somewhat reluctant. Just this area alone has over a thousand households, sorting them out will be exhausting to death. Upon hearing this, Zones gets angry, do as you're told without so much useless talk. You even got into an argument with the patrol officer. Your subordinates hurriedly intervened to prevent the situation from worsening. At the same time, Xiang Interpol went to find a psychologist, obtained Huangjim's handwritten notes taken during therapy, to compare with the handwriting on the suicide note. Now the handwriting of the two individuals has been obtained. It won't be long before we find out who wrote the suicide note. After the police left, the man with glasses began his action. Huangjim quietly followed behind, discovered he went to a cinema. Huangjim closely followed. This movie had few viewers. Aside from him, there were only two others. One was the man with glasses. The other was DP's target to be eliminated. Halfway through the movie, the man with glasses took out a wrench and quietly approached the target. After a fierce beating, the target breathed his last. Huangjim was afraid of being discovered and hurriedly left the scene. The man with glasses took a photo and uploaded it to the dark web to prove that he had completed the task. Huangjim took the chance while the man with glasses had not yet come out. Sneaking into his house, only to find the table full of voyeuristic tapes. It couldn't help but remind Huangjim of the past, when the man with glasses, under the monitor's instruction, continued to sell those tapes at school, and at an even higher price than before. Of the money earned, the man with glasses only got a small share. All the rest goes to the monitor and in pa. This scene was just witnessed by Huangjim. Apart from what's on the table, there are also many tapes in the cabinet. Huangjim sensed something was wrong, opened the computer of the man with glasses. After logging into the dark web, it was discovered. Under the message of DP completing the task, he commented that he witnessed the murder process. But at that time, Huangjim was also at the scene. It was not found that others, then, in connection with those illegal films, Huangjim then suddenly realized. It turns out that DP is the man with glasses himself. It was also him who had previously incited others to use violence. And those precious films were the rewards he promised to the perpetrators. On his way home, the man with glasses saw two sanitation workers, so he whimsically wanted to have some fun. Just by having the uncle slap the person next to him, he gave the uncle 200,001. The uncle was completely baffled upon hearing this, wondering if this man was sick. Seeing the 
uncle reluctant, the man with glasses took the money and left. Upon returning home, the man with glasses looked around. Everything was in its place, proving no one had been there, but when he opened the closet for a look, everything inside was gone. This made him panic and he hurried to check his computer, found someone using the name of DP, issued a kill order on him, even attached a detailed address. The man with glasses realized the situation was bad and planned to leave here, but before he could leave, he heard someone knocking on the door. On the other side, Zhongs investigated the resident's information, found someone who graduated from Xinxia Middle School. They didn't dare to delay and immediately went to the man with glasses house. And at this moment, the man with glasses was trapped in a strange situation. Mission 1 announce, many wished to kill him. Yet, as a criminal, he dared not call the police. Then, the sound of breaking glass came from outside the window. It was those people who had broken in. Zones arrived at the place and kept knocking and calling out for the man with glasses, but found that the door wasn't locked. As soon as the two of them walked in, they saw the man with glasses tied up by his limbs, just as they were helping him out of his predicament. Suddenly, a few masked people rushed out of the room. It seems that they are going to make a move on the man with glasses. Zones fought with them to protect him, but there were too many of them. Another officer was accidentally harmed. The man with glasses was also taken away by them. Zhongs closely followed those people, trying to snatch the man with glasses back from them, but more and more people kept coming. Zhongs was completely unable to control the situation. The man with glasses quickly ran out the door while they were fighting, just happened to run into Jiang Interpol who was there to see him. Jiang Interpol quickly got out of the car to help seeing the situation. Zhongs also joined the fight after noticing. Once there was no one around the bespectacled man, Jiang Interpol hurriedly took him away. Unexpectedly, there was a sneak attack from behind. Zone stepped forward to stop it after seeing it and ended up getting stabbed. During the chaos, the bespectacled man took the chance to escape. Those people also chased after him. Zones told Jiang Interpol not to worry about him. The man with glasses is Huang Jim's next target. We must find him. After Jiang Interpol left, Zones received a call from Huang Jim. Only then did he know that the man with glasses was the DP he had been searching for. And those people who were chasing the man with glasses, they got paid from him selling and spreading illegal videos. Before Huang Jim could finish speaking, Zones fainted due to excessive blood loss, and it was at this moment that the ambulance arrived. The officer had been chasing the man with glasses all the way. The outcome is still that he was taken away by another group. They were also there to carry out the task issued by DP. The officer saw the license plate number and planned to follow them. Jiang Interpol asked him to keep an eye on them first. He himself still had other matters to deal with. After the two parted, Jiang Interpol returned to the bespectacled man's room and found his handwritten notes. On the other hand, the people who took away the bespectacled man followed DP's instructions, took him to the designated place. After seeing the person, Huang Jim administered an anesthetic, stripped naked and tied up in the pool. Initially, the man with the glasses didn't recognize Huang Jim. It was not until Huang Jim mentioned in Zay that the man with glasses remembered. Facing Huang Jim's continuous questioning, the man with glasses insisted that he did not kill in Zay. But Huang Jim did not think so. If it weren't for his sabotage, and Zay wouldn't have been driven to a dead end. The story begins on that night. On his way home, and Zay encountered his mother fraternizing with another man. And that person was his teacher. Seeing the teacher drive off, and Zay hurriedly followed him. He tracked him all the way home. And Zay revealed to the teacher the identity of his mother and used this to threaten him to allow himself to return to school. The teacher, having a weak spot in Anne's hands, dared not disobey. The squad leader, wearing glasses, tested the new weapon on both Zones and Huang Jim as an experiment. Without Anne's protection, neither dared nor had the strength to resist. As the squad leader was getting into it, a baseball rolled to his feet. Their hero had arrived. Without a word, and Zay kicked the squad leader, then followed it up with a beating. Hearing the commotion, all the classmates rushed to watch. And pa also reported the matter to the boss. The guy with glasses ran to report to the teacher, but this time, the teacher chose to ignore it. After all, with something hanging over his head, it wasn't easy for him to step in. Meanwhile, the boss arrived at the rooftop with his crew and started fighting with Anze. They were overwhelmingly numerous, and Zay had no chance to get his phone back. He could only take the beatings passively, but Anze didn't give up. He struggled to his feet and fought back against the group. After dealing with the underlings, Anze uses a signature move to knock the boss to the ground. Everyone is shocked at the sight. In the end, Anze is victorious in this struggle, and Zay becomes a hero admired by his peers for this fight. To zones, and Zay is his god. After that, no one dares to bully them anymore. Unfortunately, the good times don't last. Anne's father, who was dodging debts, 
is confirmed by the police to have committed suicide by taking drugs. This matter had a significant impact on Inze. The guy with glasses still causes trouble at this time, suggested to the teacher to fundraise for Inze. But his real purpose is to express sympathy for Inze through the help of teachers and classmates. Inze himself is full of pride and doesn't want to be looked down upon because of this. Becoming the topic of others' conversations, seeing the bullied hero, Zones, a sudden change in his heart. He saw his entire class wearing pig masks, making disgusting noises, and the class monitor, that bastard, is the one commanding these pigs. Watching the class monitor and the guy with glasses succeed in their cunning plan, and Zay vents his inner dissatisfaction and vows to make them pay. Because of the guy with glasses' excessive actions, he has shattered the hero inside Huang Jiman Zone's hearts, became the object of everyone's sympathy and pity, deliberately making him fall into the abyss. Huang Jim becomes more and more agitated as he speaks, places the prepared electric baton by the side of the pool, then turns on the tap next to it, waiting for the water level to rise and touch the electric baton, the man with glasses will surely die. After everything is prepared, Huang Jim leaves the place. On the other side, Zones was stabbed with a knife, receiving treatment in the hospital. Jiang Interpol proposes to the superiors to have Zones withdraw from the investigation of Huang Jim's case and to have someone guard the ward. If Zones wakes up and wants to leave, place him in handcuffs. As for the specific reasons, Jiang Interpol will explain later. In fact, not long ago, Jiang Interpol consulted a handwriting analyst. The results showed that Zone's handwriting is quite similar to that in the suicide note. But Jiang Interpol couldn't figure out why Zones would want to help Inze write a will. In the midst of thinking, Jiang Interpol discovered all real estate under Huang Jim's name was transferred. Only a usage right for the offline palace bar was retained. Jiang Interpol found it strange and decided to take a look there. Meanwhile, the two people who kidnapped the man with glasses were successfully captured by the police. Upon receiving the message, the team members immediately set out. In the ward room, only Zones is left. Zones, hearing their conversation, also plans to go along, but is stopped by the guard at the door. Zones easily takes care of it with a shoulder throw. After interrogating the two, it is learned that they dumped the man with glasses in the alley and then left. They don't know what happened after that. While speaking, Zones rushed here, asked them about Huang Jim's whereabouts, seeing how aggressive his approach is. A team member quickly stops him. The leader also persuades him to go back and recuperate, leave the rest to them to resolve. After the reinforcements arrive, a search of the area is conducted. On the other side, Jiang Interpol has already entered the bar. They find various investigative materials and surveillance equipment, and a notebook titled King of Pigs written by Huang Jim. The content inside records things about Inze. Inze faced setbacks at school. He went to the secret base alone. Zones and Huang Jim also ran to find him. Inze asked Huang Jim for a camera. The three of them took a photo together. Anne's unusual behavior caught Huang Jim's attention. After some pressing questioning, it was revealed that Inze planned to commit suicide by jumping off a building in front of the whole school during morning exercises tomorrow. He wanted to use his own death to make those who bullied and mocked him live forever in fear and pain. This was the best revenge against them. And this crazy idea left Huang Jim and Zones in disbelief. They urged Inze to endure a little longer. After going to high school, those people would not be seen, but Inze had made up his mind. No matter how they persuaded him, it was futile. Zones cannot accept Anne's choice. A person runs out of the secret base, only to encounter a man with glasses halfway. The man with glasses came to convey the squad leader's message. As long as he apologizes to the squad leader, past grievances will be overlooked. But Zones is clearly not in the wrong. Why should he apologize? The man with glasses persuades him to yield. Then life wouldn't be so hard henceforth. Zones would rather die than submit, and certainly wouldn't grovel like the man with glasses. If it wasn't for his cunning tricks, the winner would definitely have been Inze. Zones reminded him not to rejoice too soon. The matter is not yet over. Inze, who had already made a decision, changed his mind because of some matters. The police took him to the place where his father had lived, allowing him to take away some keepsakes. Inze looked around and discovered two gift boxes on the shelf. One box opens to reveal red shoes for his mother, the other contains a baseball for himself. Upon seeing these, Enze couldn't help but burst into tears. After calming down, Enze moved some important things back home, accidentally overheard his mother crying to others. Her husband had died, leaving her and Enze to rely on each other. She has always worked hard to earn money, wanting to give Enze the best life. But how long can such days last? Even so, she must stay strong and alive until she raises Inze into an adult. Seeing his mother like this, Inze felt very sad inside. He didn't have the courage to just end it all. So, 
he decided to change his plan. He and Zongs would collaborate to stage a play and create the illusion of suicide. When he stood on the rooftop, Zongs pretended to discover him ready to jump off. Then they drew the attention of the entire school. Both teachers and students, with their commotion like this, those people will definitely restrain themselves a bit. After that, and Zay wants to study hard. When he grows up, he wants to be a policeman to protect his mother and punish the wicked. Zones agrees verbally, but doesn't agree with Anne's ideas in his heart. The next day, during morning exercise time, the classmates go downstairs on time. According to the plan, Anze goes to the rooftop and stands at the highest point. Without waiting for Zones' help, Anne's actions have already attracted the attention of the classmates. He originally intended to put on an act, but someone kicked him from behind. Seeing the name Jian Interpol, he was very surprised. During the police search, they heard a call for help from inside the building, but it wasn't very clear. Zones, who was waiting for news in the car, suddenly received a call from Huang Jim. Huang Jim got straight to the point, asking Zones to choose between saving the man with glasses or killing him. Zones did not reply, stimulated by Huang Jim in such a way. Zones experienced hallucinations again and saw the figure of Anze. This time, Zones didn't avoid it but directly opened fire at him. The gunshot attracted the attention of the police upstairs, who all evacuated. At this moment, the water level had already risen. In the instant of contact with the electric baton, he died on the spot. During the apprehension of Huang Jim, Zones received a call from him. Huang Jim went straight to the point. Let Zones choose to save the man with glasses or to kill him. Zones did not reply. Provoked by Huang Jim, Zones experienced a hallucination again. Seeing An's figure, this time, Zones did not evade but opened fire directly at him. But the hallucination did not disappear. Their eyes met, prompting Zones to recall the past. And Zay, after changing his mind about suicide, ran to tell Zones to cooperate and stage a play, to fake a suicide and scare all the teachers and students at the school, so bullies wouldn't dare to pick on them. Zones verbally agreed but didn't agree in his heart. And Zay is Superman, a hero, a god in his heart, to save the weak humans, but now his heart is wavering, becoming indecisive like humans. Zones finds this hard to accept, but Anze hasn't noticed Zones' unusual behavior, still dreaming of the future with him. The two promise to become police officers when they grow up. This gives the ability to punish the wrongdoers. Thinking of this, Zones sees Anze moving away from him. Zones, not giving up, keeps shooting at Anze, muttering under his breath that he must die. After death, he can curse those demons. This is what a god should do, and only Anze can do it. Zones is willing to become a monster, to assist Anze in defeating those bastards. Zones follows Anze all the way, unknowingly. I arrived at Xinxia Middle School, looking at the familiar places, memories of the past re-emerged, and Zay, following the plan, went to the rooftop, intending just to pretend, he unexpectedly was pushed down by Zones, after the murder of the man with glasses was exposed, it caused a great uproar online, his other identity, DP was also made public by the police. Many netizens speculated that the murderer's motive was to punish him. On the other side, Huang Jim is holding flowers to pay respects to his deceased wife. The tragic outcome of his wife was entirely due to Huang Jim. Initially, for his own revenge plot, he did not hesitate to use living people for practice. Although they were criminals, the fact that he killed people is true. Afterward, he relayed the experience through a vision to Anze. Unexpectedly, his wife overheard it, taking advantage of Huang Jim's absence from home. She went through his personal belongings. The clothes indeed are stained with blood. Upon seeing this, the wife finds it hard to accept. She never imagined Huang Jim would do such a thing. To stop Huang Jim's madness from continuing, the wife got several bottles of sleeping pills from a doctor friend. She is already prepared, ready to join Huang Jim in oblivion. Little did she know, plans can't keep up with change. Huang Jim, due to drug tolerance, woke up midway and saved his own life, while the wife has gone forever, leading him behind. Now everything is coming to an end. Once he takes care of the last target, he will go down to be with his wife. Huang Jim committed multiple crimes but still escaped the law. The investigation by the special case team alone is far from enough. After considering various factors, the chief decided to make the investigation public, disband the special case team and establish a special search department to solve the case as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Huang Jim, carrying a large sum of money, went to find An's mother. He did not reveal his identity only mentioning he is a friend of Anze, came to offer An's filial piety. Before leaving, 
Wang Jim vowed deeply to the ante, perhaps this was his last visit to see the elder, he is going to fulfill his own mission, after the DP case happened, it caused an uproar online, consequently, the police held a press conference, to answer related questions, the spokesperson was the head of the special search department, person in charge of the serial murder case, when reporters asked about the killer who murdered DP, the team leader directly stated Huang Jim's name, as for the motive, the police are still investigating, the relationship between the two cannot be disclosed, mid-sentence, a familiar voice was heard, saying that the two were classmates, those who heard turned to look at the door, the person approaching turned out to be Huang Jim, upon seeing him, the reporters immediately swarmed up. Huang Jim also confesses in front of the camera, the previous incidents were all his doing, those people were perpetrators of school violence, death was their just deserts, and the reason he turned himself in, was to expose another truth. Upon seeing this, Zong squeezes through the crowd with all his might, to arrest Huang Jim, to stop him from saying more, during the escort. He was intercepted by the special investigation team. Zones also couldn't defy the orders. After all, he isn't the one in charge of this case now. During the interrogation process, Huang Jim confessed all the criminal facts, but there was one past event he didn't mention, and that is exactly the truth he wants to reveal. However, he wants to talk to Zones alone. On the other hand, after receiving the money, Anne's mother immediately contacted Jiang Interpol, explained the situation to her. Upon hearing, Xiang Interpol knew it was Huang Jim's doing. During the conversation, the aunt mentioned Anne's suicide note. Xiang Interpol truthfully informed it wasn't written by Anne's A. As for the rest, Xiang Interpol didn't disclose. The aunt didn't press further, only hoped that Xiang Interpol could catch the culprit to give Anne's A an explanation. As for this sum of money, Auntie asked Xiang Interpol to take her away as she couldn't enjoy her ill-gotten gains because of Huang Jim's request. The special investigation team brought Zones in for questioning. The first thing he did after entering was to turn off the sound in the interrogation room. The cop next door saw this and was puzzled, but didn't dare to act rashly. They were still hoping that Zones would reveal something. After Huang Jim knew the sound was off, he urged Zones to tell the truth. But Zones is still playing dumb, doesn't know what Huang Jim means. In fact, Everything that happened that day was seen by Huang Jim. After Anze changed the plan, the first person he sought was Huang Jim, but he did not share his thoughts with Huang Jim. Instead, he asked Huang Jim to Photoshop a group photo of three people, although Anze didn't say much, but Huang Jim has mostly guessed. Anze began to change his mind and no longer thought about suicide to confirm his own thoughts. Huang Jim secretly followed Anze. He discovered that he asked Zongs to do something strange. After two people finished talking, Zongs went to their secret base. Huang Jim, still concerned, followed to take a look. As a result, he found that will. Huang Jim did not dare to think the worst, but just to be safe, he also went to the rooftop the next morning and witnessed the process of Anne's death. The secrets buried in Zone's heart were exposed. His emotions became extremely agitated, but considering someone was watching next door, Zones had no choice but to hold back, insisting that everything Huang Jim said was a lie. Huang Jim told him not to deceive himself anymore. Admitting his mistakes was what he should do. Speaking of which, Xiang Interpol suddenly burst in and locked the door from the inside with ease. She took out Huang Jim's notebook, which recorded everything that happened 20 years ago, including how Zones killed and Zay. Seeing Zones still arguing, Xiang Interpol pulled out that suicide note, which had been confirmed by handwriting analysis to be unquestionably written by Zones. In 2015, a law was introduced in South Korea, abolishing the statute of limitations for murders committed after August 1st. 2000, and Zay died in 01, and Zones was then 14 years old, not considered a juvenile offender, and had to bear the relevant legal responsibilities. Jiang Interpol knew that it would be difficult to prosecute with just these pieces of evidence, but now that there is an eyewitness, the chances of winning the case have greatly increased. At this moment, colleagues break through the door. Jiang Interpol quickly takes the evidence and leaves the interrogation room. It seems she is giving Zones a chance waiting for him to confess on his own. After the interrogation ended, the team leader came to find out what happened, check if Huang Jim has given any instructions. Zongs deliberately told them, there is also someone kidnapped by Huang Jim and subjected to imprisonment. The exact location is unknown, somewhere near Yuji Mountain, and Huang Jim proposed to lead the team there himself. The team leader approved his action, before setting out. Zongs took a gun and loaded the bullets, hesitating when it came to the last one. In the end, 
he still put it in his own pocket. The matter of Huang Jim being taken to Yuji Mountain reached the director's desk. The person who sent the message was Zones. The director immediately assembled manpower, intending to help Huang Jim resolve the crisis. This operation was led personally by Zones. Huang Jim was kept completely in the dark, having no idea where they were going before setting off. Zong sent a text message to the director, if you want to save Huang Jim, Take National Highway 42. This operation involved a total of four cars. Zongs and Huang Jim rode together in one car. The other three were responsible for escorting to ensure the smooth completion of the operation. As they were about to approach the vicinity of Yuji Mountain, Zong suddenly sped up, moving ahead out of the main troop site. Following them came a taxi. The person inside was the director. The police in the rear realized something was wrong and ordered their vehicle to quickly follow. Suddenly, Three taxis burst out in front, blocking their way. The remaining part is the showdown between Zones and the director. Both refuse to give way, tailgating each other. Zones seizes the right moment, a fierce crash, throwing the director behind. But the director won't admit defeat, accelerating, heading to collide with him. Once, twice, thrice. Yet Zones is utterly unaffected. Along the way, he glances at the vast sea beside him. An alternative idea springs to his mind. He rolls down the window adjusts the rearview mirror, then, he fiercely turns the wheel, rushed into the river, water kept pouring in, and the car quickly sank to the bottom of the river, Zong struggled off the seatbelt and glanced at Huang Jim in the back seat, without looking back, he swam towards the shore, leaving Huang Jim alone in the water struggling, soon, there was no more movement, Zong's returned to the shore, collapsed exhausted on the ground, the chief ran over, took the keys, jumped into the river to rescue Huang Jim. Seeing Huang Jim motionless, the station head, fearing something would go wrong, hastened his actions. After opening his hand, he led him to the surface of the water. He placed him on the shore and performed emergency rescue measures. Huang Jim soon regained consciousness. At that moment, the sound of a police siren came from not far away. The station head immediately took Huang Jim and left. By the time zones noticed, the two were already far away. He wanted to chase after them, but his two legs were no match for four wheels. He could only vent his frustration by roaring loudly. However, there are always more solutions than difficulties. Without a car, just stop one on the spot. With a gun in hand, who would dare not comply? Upon learning of this, Jiang Interpol immediately rushed to the scene of the accident. The vehicle that fell into the river has been salvaged. No trapped persons were found. Jiang Interpol returned to the highway where the incident happened, noticed a surveillance camera installed not far away, covering a range of 15 meters. Jiang Interpol found the relevant district and watched the surveillance video. Discovered zones intentionally turned the steering wheel towards the riverbank. The goal is to eliminate Huang Jim. After seeing Zones' motives were impure, Jiang Interpol ordered his subordinates to track Zones Zones' phone location, with the help of the police chief, Huang Jim avoided the police chase and was temporarily safe. Huang Jim did not expect that helping the chief with a small favor at the beginning would lead the chief to follow him loyally to this day, but for the road ahead. Huang Jim wants to walk alone. The chief also has a niece to take care of. Huang Jim does not want to drag him down. After the chief left, Huang Jim started his own plan. First, he contacted the boss, asking him to fulfill the promise made a year ago, to turn the contents of the notebook into a report, and to publish it without missing a single word. The boss did not hesitate. This was the only way he could atone for his sins. Additionally, at the end of the report, attached is the list of campus violence perpetrators. Basically, all were students from their class. After editing, the boss sent it under his real name to various websites and media. Among them, a website called Electronic Prison exposed all the perpetrators' information. With this out, these people will probably not have easy days ahead. In the company, they are met with cold looks from colleagues, facing the risk of being fired. Families with a spouse and children also suffer as a result. No one wants to be soul-searched by a child at first sight. Did dad bully classmates when he was a kid? If you don't want others to know, don't do it yourself. The mistakes made in the past will one day rebound on oneself. After separating from Huang Jim, the director came to the underground bar with gasoline. This place was their secret base. Inside were various investigation files. Huang Jim's plan was already in its final stage. Keeping it here is of no use. Might as well end it all with a blaze. After dealing with these matters, the director returned to the ward. Unexpectedly encountered Zones here. Zones wanted nothing but to know Huang Jim's whereabouts. The director was sincere, refusing to reveal anything. Even when Zones pointed a gun at him, 
He showed no fear. This was a good opportunity. The director wanted to ask Zones if it was him who sent the information about Huangjim going to Yuji Mountain. The purpose is to draw oneself out. He takes the opportunity to stage a play and fabricates an accident to harm Huangjim. Zones did not refute, but he lacks the patience to continue quarreling with the chief. He yanks off the chief's niece's respirator, forcing him to reveal Huangjim's whereabouts. Out of helplessness, the chief can only tell the truth. Jiang Interpol follows the phone's GPS to find the hospital. She persuades Zones to stop at this point. Matters from 20 years ago can still be dealt with leniently, but if one continues to be obstinate and ignore the truth, not even the king of hell can save them. Zones doesn't care about that. As long as the matters of the past are not exposed, he is willing to become a monster once more. Jiang Interpol is also too kind-hearted to lay a hand on Zones. After letting Zones go, Jiang Interpol went to question the chief, wanting to know know the whereabouts of Huangjim, if you let the two of them be. Who knows what trouble they'll cause. Jiang Interpol and Zones are different, not so crude, nor would they threaten with a child. Women, ah, are more adept at playing the emotional card, preaching moral principles. Even someone as resolute as the chief was eventually moved by Jiang Interpol. She admitted that Huangjim had gone to Xinxia Middle School. The more Jiang Interpol thought about it, the more something seemed off. She remembered Huang Jim had once mentioned, I will complete the things and Zay failed to do. Could he be referring to suicide? After the list of perpetrators was published, Huang Jim was the first to find the teacher. He injected him with an anesthetic. The teacher is a major character in this game. Without him, it wouldn't work. Huang Jim, with the unconscious teacher in tow, arrived at Xinxia Middle School. This is where the nightmare began. It should end here at last. Huang Jim pushed the teacher into the office, tied him up tightly, made a cut on each of his wrists. As it's the veins, he won't suffocate immediately. The teacher was terrified by this scene, begging Huang Jim to spare him. Huang Jim ignored him, dialed the teacher's phone, turned on the speakerphone and placed it aside, then took another mobile phone and left. On the playground, find a conspicuous spot, casually threw a pile of books, then turn the cell phone volume to the maximum and place it beside the books. The bait is set just waiting for the fish to bite. Huang Jim uses anonymous messaging, sent an identical email to all classmates, roughly saying, there are some documents on the track and field of Xinxia Middle School, enough to prove they aren't the perpetrators of campus violence. If you want them, come quickly. Not long after, Zhongs came knocking on the door. He always wanted to clear up one thing. What exactly did Huang Jim see a year ago? That drove him to such madness. Huang Jim's answer was beyond Zhongs's belief. And smile was the reason for Huang Jim's vengeance. On the day Enze resolved to take his own life, the three of them took a photo together. The reason Enze smiled so brilliantly was to spare his two friends from grief and pain. Enze was worried about them until his death. Yet Zhongs heartlessly killed him. Afterwards, he lived as if nothing had happened. What's the difference between him and those scoundrels? Zhongs got furious upon hearing this, went up to start a fight with Huang Jim, but his old injuries flared up, making him no match for Huang Jim. By this time, the classmates had already arrived one after another, seeing the books scattered on the ground. They pounced on them like hungry wolves, frantically searching for the life-saving document. No one noticed the cell phone beside, nor could they hear the teacher's repeated calls, things clearly within a foot's reach, ignored completely as they bear no relation to oneself, not even warranting a glance. Once everyone had assembled, Huang Jim followed An's fantasy to the top floor of the school. Zones closely followed behind, looking at the anxious expressions of those people on the playground. Huang Jim seemed to see the past, up to now. They haven't shown any remorse, always feeling innocent. Though they didn't bully others back then, indifference is often more despicable than the bullying itself. If only one person had stood up to stop it, the outcome today would have been different. While speaking, Zong suddenly lunged at him, grabbing his throat tightly. In Zong's view, the person who saved Huangjim from hell is himself. If it wasn't for him killing Enze and catching the school's attention, they might have continued to suffer bullying. He is also in pain for killing Enze. But that is in the past. Why must Huang Jim bring up old matters? He doesn't care what the truth is. He also doesn't want to know how those people are doing. Zones grows more and more agitated as he speaks. And Huang Jim is about to run out of breath. At that moment, the sound of police sirens came from not far away. Only then did Zones calm down. But who would have known that as soon as he let go? Huang Jim handcuffed the two of them together. Everything was not over yet. Ant's wish had not yet been fulfilled. Watching Enze slowly stand up on the rooftop. Huang Jim told Zones to get ready. Before Zones could react, 
Quangjim was already hanging outside with a side flip. The cries attracted the attention of those people. If not for Zong's hard struggle to hold on, both of them might have already fallen long ago. Quangjim pleaded earnestly with Zong's, they must go together to meet in Zay. Upon hearing this, Zong's hesitated. In the end, he decided to let go and fall from the building with Huangjim. By the time Jiang Interpol arrived, it was already too late. Seeing the two people, and Zay also jumped down. This time, they could finally be together, no longer let Enze be alone. Not long after the incident, Jiang Interpol returned the photo to An's mother and handed her a notebook. Inside was the full account of An's murder. Huang Jim, the station chief who committed the crime, was an accomplice. He should be punished. As for the teacher, he is not dead, but it is still hard to say whether he can wake up. Until the end, Interpol Jiang did not expose Zong's past. Instead, he praised his merits for capturing fugitives considered it the last bit of respect for an old friend.